What's up y'all, Toya here, and I am back with another video for y'all. Before we get into the video, make sure you guys leave a like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. All right, y'all. So today's topic has been on my list of videos to do for a bit. But with all the talk about the deactivations, a lot of people are questioning whether or not gig work is still actually worth it. So I wanted to express my thoughts as far as what I think is hurting the gig economy, as well as hear you guys' thoughts on this topic as well. So let's go ahead and get into it. So like I just mentioned, a lot of people are trying to figure out whether or not they should still stick with gig work. Is gig work even sustainable? It's already been argued that it's not, but it seems like more recently it's getting tougher and tougher to justify sticking with gig work. Between vets who've been pretty much fighting an uphill battle for who knows how long, to the newbies who have heard all of these horror stories and they're really not sure if they should even get into gig work. There's a lot to consider here. And one of the main issues that a lot of people are talking about is the oversaturation. For the most part, anytime that you're gonna be signing up for any new app, you're more than likely gonna be put on a wait list. Sometimes you can wait for a few weeks, a few months, and for some cases you might be waiting for over a year. The only exception to this is if an app has recently opened up in a new market or if there is a local app that not a lot of people know about. But nine times out of 10, you're gonna be on the wait list for pretty much every single app you try to sign up for. Now, when you do get on the platform, you might find it kind of difficult to not only come across orders in general, but quality orders. Cherry picking may not be profitable anymore. In some cases, you might have to decide whether you want to cherry pick or do you want to take every single order? Because the more you cherry pick, you decline, decline, decline. You're just sitting around maybe 15, 20, 30 minutes, maybe longer before actually getting a good order worth taking. So you're wasting time. You're not making money. Or you could take the crap orders and you're pretty much delivering for free. So it ends up being a lose-lose. And to contribute to this oversaturation, we have a huge migrant problem. And whether or not they're legal or illegal migrants, they are most definitely flooding these apps like crazy. Not only are you fighting against bought and stolen accounts, but you also have to fight against bots, jammers, and who knows what else is going on on the back end that's blocking you from getting those quality orders. And these companies, they don't care. They're getting the orders delivered. They'll say that, you know, they're trying to improve security measures and do this and do that. But clearly these folks are like two steps ahead of them every single time. So they just simply aren't doing enough to address this issue because they're more concerned about their profits. And we can clearly see this based off of the pay for the drivers, or I should say lack thereof, because pay is constantly getting cut over and over and over again. And some people might say, well, the companies, they really aren't profiting as much as they were back during the pandemic. The stocks are low, this and that. And sure, that might be the case. But last time I checked, the DoorDash CEO is still worth about $2 billion. So whether or not his profits are down from the last couple of years or not, he's doing pretty good for himself. Meanwhile, the drivers are still getting those scraps. And because this pay is so low, a lot of drivers are relying on tips more than ever. And yes, tipping has been a conversation for the longest. While yes, there are a lot of people who do sympathize with the drivers and they are willing to leave decent tips, there are just as many, if not more people who just simply don't respect the drivers enough to leave them a reasonable tip so they can justify taking that order. And yes, we can argue all day as far as whether or not customers should or shouldn't be tipping. I definitely agree 100% that this should not fall on the customers to tip. However, these drivers are not going to be doing these deliveries for free. Again, there has to be something that justifies them taking that order. And granted, yes, there's gonna be drivers who take the jobs regardless, they're still gonna deliver them, but a smart driver is not going to waste their time with that. But again, going back to what I said before, some folks may not feel like they have an option to go and cherry pick anymore. It's either I make this little bit of money or I'm not gonna make anything at all because I'm declining, declining, declining because, well, I'm not getting tips from these orders. Base pay by itself is just not paying enough. So it's a tough decision. 
So with all that being said, gig workers, they have to battle not only other drivers, they're battling the customers and they're battling the company itself. And this list that I touched on, obviously it's not all of the problems. I would say these are probably some of the primary issues that a lot of drivers are dealing with. With having to deal with all of these issues, is staying in gig work still worth it? Obviously there are some markets that are still thriving, they're still doing well. But overall, I think we can all agree that there has been a downward trend with the gig economy. And it's just simply hard to justify sticking with gig work. There's just so many obstacles and there just simply isn't much reward for dealing with all of that. I've seen a few people in the comments say that gig work should be used as a stepping stone to independence. And I agree, I definitely agree. While yes, there have been some folks that have been able to do gig work full time and they've been very successful with it, it's getting harder and harder and harder to maintain that success. Because here's the thing, with most W-2 jobs, you're going to see some sort of pay increase year after year after year, right? You can argue whether or not it's enough to keep up with the rising costs of expenses, but at least you're getting something, right? But with gig work, you're seeing your pay go down. And some cases you find yourself working more and more and more and you're technically earning less because while yes, you might be making the same $1,500 every single week that you've been making for the past two or three years, that $1,500 is not the same $1,500 from two or three years ago. If your expenses are going up and you're making the same amount year after year after year, you're losing money. And with that, you have to decide whether or not it's still worth sticking with it. Like I mentioned before, using gig work as a stepping stone could be a good idea. A lot of people transition into the cargo van business. And while yes, I technically don't know much about that side of gig work and beyond, I do know for sure that there is definitely more opportunity out there for folks because you have to put in a little bit of money up front if you want to actually get into the cargo van business. Whether you're renting a van or you purchase your own van, there might be certain insurances or licenses that you have to purchase ahead of time. There's a lot more to it than just getting in your everyday car and just hitting the road and doing deliveries. So there may not be as many people doing it. And like I said, that just brings a bit more opportunity for folks. So that might be something that I visit in the future. Who knows? You know, I know it's not for everybody, but like I said, just using these gig apps as a stepping stone rather than just using it as your primary source of income, that might be the direction that a lot of us may have to go because the way things are going, it's not looking too good. It's not looking too good. And I'm not saying that this is the end of gig work as we know it. You know, there's still gonna be a demand for drivers no matter where you go. But the issue is, are you actually going to be making money or are you making money for the company? That's where the issue lies. So yeah, you just have to make the best decision and go from there and decide how do you wanna approach gig work. So I would love to know you guys' thoughts on this particular topic. For the vets that have been around for a bit, I would love to know what your experience has been like over the past few years. Are you making less? Are you making more? What types of adjustments are you making? Are you just hopping to other apps as your primary app slow down? And what does the future of gig work look like to you? Are you gonna continue doing gig work into next year, the year after that? Or are you going to venture into something else? And for the new folks, is everything that I'm telling you now or that you've heard from other content creators, is this making you hesitant with getting into gig work? Do you think it's even reasonable to consider getting into gig work at this time? I wanna hear from both sides. So let me know in the comments. Now, before I go, I have to remind you guys to leave a like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you do not miss a video. But I'm gonna go ahead and get up out of here, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm gonna catch you guys on the next one. And as always, stay safe out there and keep grinding.